Congratulations, your water broke. It is 546. I'm Danny Bonadici. This is KZOK. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Fabulous. How are you? I'm well. Thank you, Paul. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you. Kids, how's it going in there? Doing well. Awesome. Now, who's in there today? There have been like guests all week in and out. Yeah, Amanda's joining us this morning. Good morning, Amanda. How the hell are you? All right, then. She's That's great. <laughs> all right. Well, we all know Amanda. She does overnights here quite often. Yeah. Like three days a week. And uh, starts her show like 10 at night and ends at 9.33 days later or something like that. She's got the longest <laughs> yeah, shifts right. in radio, I-, I believe. So let me explain uh, my, my water breaking. And I've actually made this mistake before, except with sake, the Japanese rice wine. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, tried... To expedite matters, try and figure stuff out. Try and, uh, you know, when I was working at Sushi on Sunset, I made $1,000 a month and worked like 16-hour days all the time. Wow. It was not a really financially sound deal. <laughs> but I'd never had a job before. And they, you know, they said, okay, but we're going to starve you. And I said, okay. Yeah. They uh, didn't starve you, though, because you stole food from, or took food. No, uh, the food was part of the deal. The and if you think you can live on a few uh, slices of octopus, <laughs> yeah, have at it. And that's, that's literally, if I took anything without permission, it would be a leg of octopus, yeah. which I have 9,000 different recipes for, all of which are great until I try them, and then they're horrible <laughs> when they go wrong. But uh, so yesterday, we get a, it's not sparklets, it's not arrowhead, I don't know what it is, but we get bottled water. Okay. Uh, they seem to be uh, five-gallon jugs of water, and talking about takers, we have to take them up. The poor water dude has to take them up about seven stairs in the, in the front to get to the front door. And then from the front door, Amy and I have to take them up about another dozen stairs to get them where the water thing with Bobber is. Okay. And I hate it every time. I mean, it's like it, 40 pounds, it doesn't sound like much. I used to bench very close to 300 pounds. You'd think you could walk around 40 pounds. I lost 40 pounds on a diet, for yeah. God's sake. It's just there's something wrong with the way they're shaped or it's all condensed in that one little spot. So I, know, <laughs> I noticed yesterday... There were three bottles down on the uh, uh, porch, and I was going to get them, uh, two of them, in one thing. I don't do that a lot because what happens is I can make it up the stairs, but I'm out of breath at the top of the stairs to the point of, oh, did I just give myself a heart attack? Yeah. And then when you put them down, you think, oh, no, I did. Things start, little dots start floating around. It's a bad thing. I shouldn't take two. I shouldn't take any. You should. I should have porters. I'm an important person. <laughs> so I went downstairs onto the porch. Tied this rope-like thing, um, wasn't a cord, whatever it was. I'll just call it a rope, but it wasn't a rope. But okay. you could tie something up with it. Uh, so I looped it through the handles and tied it up, and then, whoosh, like a grappling hook, threw it over <laughs> the thing to the balcony, and that's the kitchen. Like, it sounds like my house is really big, but there's a floor that doesn't do anything. You go into my front door, and you have a choice to go up and or down to get to rooms that do something. Otherwise, yeah. that's it. I think it's called a vestibule Okay. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but I don't want to take these things up. So uh, I go to, I throw the, the rope over, and they're, you know, it's working out, like, perfectly. Like it's, you're making a pulley system. Yeah. It, okay. Yeah, I should have I thought more pulley-ish. Because I, uh, in a house I had in Philadelphia when we first moved there, the house that you have been to, Sarah, um, that one actually had a pulley. Yeah. Really? It was 200 years old. They had okay, a yeah. lift armament and hay or whatever yeah. the hell it was. was the only way to get something yeah, into your those old timey bastards that were taken on the British lived in my house, I think. Very so cool. anyway, so I don't think about, I think I put something down like a towel. So when I pull on these ropes, and that is a reenactment, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. When I pull on these ropes to get the water bottle up, they won't carve up the banistery thing, whatever yeah. that is. And that's painted white and about a foot from one end to the other to pull it over. Well, that doesn't work at all. The second, the second I pull, that thing comes away and that's <laughs> it. So I don't, you know, first thing I do is I set it down. I don't even know if they're in the air yet when this has already gone wrong. So I said to Amy, Amy, another reenactment. <laughs> Amy, do we have touch-up paint for this banistery oh, thing? No. And she says, yeah, I think we do in the garage when they painted the house. And I said, bitching. Because I didn't tell, go on and say, I'm about to ruin this paint. So she didn't know about your uh, adventures with the water bottles to start off. Amy tries as hard as she can to never know what I'm doing in the house. As long as I'm in the house and I'm safe, everything, yeah. okay, you know, because if I'm not right in front of her doing something stupid, I'm downstairs watching porn and doing something stupid. It's like she's not a big, I'm old enough that I, I probably won't run with scissors. Yeah. So if I'm in the house, I'm not the world's biggest concern as I am when we go out. Like, when we go to the mall, we went to the mall, uh, was it yesterday? We went to the mall yesterday, and uh, 
the second I'm out of her sight, she wants to run up and say, could you page a lost child? That's what, <laughs> because I'm, I'm now lost. So I pull on the rope-like thing, and it's really hard. The pulley thing would have been a great idea. And I pull really hard, and I don't know how. This thing seemed like a new rope cord belt slash thing. I would say belt, except it's got to be at least 15 feet long to have accomplished this. That'd be a big man. <laughs> so anyway, I pull it, and the whole thing snaps oh. when it's six feet in the air. It looks like something, not out of World's Funniest Videos, because nobody was laughing, <laughs> but it, it kind of looks like storming the beach a little bit at Normandy or something when they hit. I had enough time, because I was right there at the balcony pulling. Yeah. I had enough time to look over the edge to see what happened. What happened, it looks like a bomb went off. It just goes, and water is, you know, I mean, who cares? We're in Seattle. There's water everywhere, so what? Yeah, but not in your house. They normally. went, well, was, that's outside. That's still happening okay. outside. But it went, it was so loud. And I don't know why. It's plastic bottles full of Badoo. It went, boom! <laughs> <laughs> the, worse than if you had just left all three bottles there and expected Amy to deal with it. Oh, no, I always leave all three right. bottles there. <laughs> but here's the thing. When I go to do it, she goes, oh, no, I'll get it. Yeah. Like, uh, she's way more fit than I am. <laughs> she, you know, but she's a kid. She's 30, I think, six now. Yeah. Carry the bottles, lady. <laughs> but then you can't live with yourself. Right. No, you can't just get, I'm in fine shape. I'm, I'm not dying anytime soon. Everything feels good. I can carry the bottles up. But anytime I don't want to carry those bottles up, two things. Honey, I really think I'm old and dying. That will work. <laughs> the ticker's not what it used to be, honey. I'm sorry about that. But now I can be the old guy with a possible bad t ticker that we didn't know about who exploded your bat last <laughs> bottles of water. And I think I'm going to get fully away with not doing it anymore. And I'm so. out. I appreciate being out. So, You're right, though. It's bad because you were trying to do the right thing or good thing. Yeah, and... that happens all the time, and I'm not sure she loves me anymore. I don't know. <laughs> at 5.53 in the morning, it's time to bring this up. But I uh, I went to the uh, hairdresser yesterday, and I wanted to get my hair cut. She said I was all furry all over the neck from shaving my head, and that my hair was uneven because she shaved my head. She said, you know, I wasn't careful about making sure it was even. I just shaved your head. Yeah. Go get your hair cut. And I said, okay. She goes, now what are you going to tell them? <laughs> And, you know, hey, I'm older than you. Uh, what are you going to tell them? I said, listen, I'm going to tell them to shave my back and then just cut off anything that annoys my wife. And she said, so you're going to tell them to cut off your head? Oh, wow. Yeah, that's what I said. Oh, wow. First of all, kind of funny. <laughs> you know, you yeah. lift the bottles, I'll be funny. And never the twain show me. I'm going to tell them to cut off any part of my hair that bothers my wife. Oh, you're going to tell them to cut off your head? So, um, so um, Your hair looks good. Thank you, dear. I appreciate that. So does yours. Uh, let's see. Last thing is, I've never written an email to our bosses, our big boss. I've written them to our immediate superior, and I try not to. You know, if I want something, you technically should go to your direct superior. Shouldn't jump them. Ever. Yeah, chain of command. Chain of command, absolutely. So I, I don't do it. And yesterday, everybody's talking about the podcast with Mario Lopez and this and stuff, and they've listed a bunch of people getting awards and giving out awards and. 50% of them are pretty good friends of mine. And I said, hey, I uh, did uh, the podcast awards or whatever they were for CBS, and it all went real well. If I can help you out in any way, uh, uh, please just let me know. Okay, bye. See ya. Now, that should be good. Yeah. But Amy said she, I, I didn't ask her, and I always ask her, because the speaking spell will fool you. It'll print out what you think it said and be so close you don't see it when you proofread. Yeah. And you can be saying all sorts, like, you can say stuff that you didn't mean to say. <laughs> and she, so she normally proofreads after you proofread, before you right. send? No, I don't proofread. Okay. I wrote the thing that's stupid. <laughs> yeah. So she said, do you know you uh, um, <laughs> that you started your email in subject matter? It says, halt the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even remember what I wanted to say when I said halt the podcast, but I'm going to stick with it. Emergency landing in Minneapolis because a window broke in the cockpit. Oh, that doesn't sound good. Nope. No. This was a flight leaving from Minneapolis, St. Paul. Uh, this left at 1125 yesterday morning, only to return 15 minutes later. Nobody was hurt. Uh, we've heard a couple of terrible stories like this recently where the pilots start to get sucked out of the plane. Right. Well, this was not that bad, and nobody was hurt. They were able to see that there was a crack, that it would get worse. So they said, we're just going to turn this plane around. Yeah, now, do you know what caused the crack? Was it a, a duck or whatever? No, don't know. Just, just pilots getting sucked out. <laughs> Sounds like the 60s all over again. <laughs>
Police arrested a 45-year-old man after they believe he snuck into a man's camper van in an attempt to steal an urn of cremated remains. <laughs> Not sure why they wanted those remains, but officers say the owner of the van was sleeping inside. This was uh, parked in his Ballard driveway, and he heard somebody trying to break in. And when he... Uh, you know, sat there and waited. Then the person did actually break in and the man was inside waiting. And they said when the guy opened up the door to his camper, the van owner tackled him, struggled with him, and then he fled. The suspect had grabbed a box, which was the cremated remains of his father. Now they're trying to find this uh, perpetrator, trying to figure out why he wanted that box of cremated remains. Did he know? Yeah, I don't, cremains I don't think he knew. I he think he just figures, yeah, I've only got a minute or so before somebody. Because here's the thing. If you're going into somebody else's uh, um, house or, or RV to get the cremated remains of dad, I automatically know who you are. Yeah. You're my long-lost brother. You're right. my brother-in-law that feels you were cheated, whatever it is. Nobody just steals ashes of people they don't know. He thought there was heroin in that right. box. Yeah, maybe he thought it was full of drugs or, or money or something. It wasn't. Speaking of money, sorry to say you did not win the Mega Millions jackpot mm. unless you were in South Carolina yesterday when you purchased it. Maybe I was. You don't know. Nobody in Washington won the jackpot. Now, the one ticket, one sole ticket was sold somewhere in South Carolina. That's all we know so far. We may never know who the winner is since South Carolina is one of the few states where you are allowed to remain anonymous. All right. So we don't know if this is one person or if this was an office pool full of a thousand people. We don't know if it was five people. We may never know. But one person allegedly, you know, one one ticket was sold over $1.5 billion. Jeez. I'm, on a scale of 1 to 10, have to know who it was. A 2. Because they're from North Carolina? No, just because who gives South a rat's Carolina. butt to what they're, how, why are they a billionaire? Shut up. Matter of fact, I don't ever <laughs> want to meet them. I hate them and I'm jealous. Yeah. I will always want to know because sometimes, I feel like saying most of the time, but it just seems that way. It's a really old person from Florida. And I'd yeah. like to think that this is a young scrappy go-getter with the whole their whole lives ahead of them and they're going to make all the right choices <laughs> you wish for a lot <laughs> yeah and but most of the time it's not you're no. much more invested into someone else winning yeah. money than i ever would be i don't even care if i make the right decisions as long as i don't <laughs> die from the wrong decisions yeah. the cash sum will be 878 million oh, now the prize was actually not a record it was a record for mega millions but not a record for lotteries Powerball has gotten bigger. And that's my new uh, retirement plan, right? Powerball? Powerball, It's at 600 or something? Correct. Yeah. All right. I would take that. 600 is enough. Yeah. It's going to get bigger, too, because this Powerball is already big. So I think by the time the drawing happens, it'll get bigger. How much do you think is enough? You're never going to work again, right? You just won, and you get this lump sum of cash. Minimum, you can live a comfortable, Paul, lifestyle with your wife and your kid and never work again. I think under ten million, I'm yeah, fine. I was thinking five yeah. million right there. I could do it. I could do it. Now, yeah. I prefer twenty five. And right. if I do that, yeah. give me a hundred. Yeah. But I think I could do just fine yeah. with five million yeah. bucks. I'd be pretty happy with yeah. a million. No, you'd be surprised because I had a million once before I got divorced, and I wasn't happy ever. <laughs> yeah. So you know, it doesn't always work out that way. Saudi Arabia's King Salman and Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman met yesterday with the relatives of dead journalist Jamal Khashoggi. That was disgusting. Well, they met and gave their deepest console, uh, condolences and sympathy to the family. They said, may God rest his soul. This meeting, of course, comes uh, several days after the Saudi government's first acknowledged that he is dead after visiting the Saudi consulate. I think the Saudi guy said, I love that guy to pieces and then showed oh, some man. of the pieces. Animal trappers in Tennessee say they were called to remove a raccoon and were discovered to find something very unusual about this. Uh, what, what does Derek call him? Uh, trash trash pandas. pandas. Trash pandas. Well, this trash panda was completely different. It's a very rare albino raccoon. Really? Oh, cool. Yes. I didn't even know they had those. Oh, it doesn't have the mask, right? <laughs> it doesn't. It is It is all white, and it's got the creepy, uh, like, weird whitish blue eyes. Yeah. No pigment, skin, hair, eyes. One in almost... A million raccoons are born albino. I'd rather win the lottery than see the one in a million raccoon, but I'd see the one in a million raccoon. (laughs) Sounds interesting. (laughs) What was kind of cute is this raccoon 
uh, was with a whole bunch of, I was going to say regular, that seems sort of mean to say, but regular trash pandas. Right. So everybody else had the right colors, and then there was the white one. So they captured them, released them into the wild, letting the albino go free. Right, sweet. I mean, some places they would have chopped him up and ground his bones and tried to snort them or whatever they do. But I don't know that they have raccoons in that part of Africa where they do that. <laughs> And a terrible story, another terrible story out of Michigan. Mm -hmm. I don't know that we've talked about it much because it's a pretty terrible story, but we are now on our third case of police finding remains in funeral homes in Michigan that aren't supposed to be there. On Friday, police found 63 bodies in a funeral home. Uh, Um... Fetuses. No. The remains of more were found at a different funeral home. More fetuses or more bodies? Both uh, bodies and fetuses. I wondered about that, if it was all at the same place or if it was multiple places. Because I was was reading like they were finding, you know, bodies in the ceiling panels. That's where they were. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, they are not the same, to answer your question. Yeah. Now this... How do they, I, and not to be gross, but that the smell, that's the main thing you hear about right. dead bodies is the smell. Yeah. And, you know, killers and murderers try and wrap them up in nine different tarps with lye and then bury them, and they get caught because people smell the decay. Yeah. Putting them up in the ceiling tile shouldn't work. Well, this, uh, the reason these are, seem to be being discovered is they are going into old buildings to do asbestos removal, and they're finding things in the attic. So third case of decades-old fetal remains being found at a different Michigan funeral home. No, i am got got to guess they're coming from some kind of doctor's office? Yeah. Clinic? Yeah, you would think. Jeez Louise. Very, very strange. Uh, I promise. Here. For your chance to win, just text that word right now to 200-200-CKZOK.com uh, for all the rules and details. Well, here we are halfway through or midway through, part almost all the way through October, which is hurricane season. And we do have another hurricane dumping heavy rains on Mexico. It is headed for Texas. Now, Texas has already been hit by several storms. Right. Residents of Austin, huge Austin, beautiful place, capital. Yeah. Well, they're being told to boil their tap water because they have such a, a infiltration of mud, silt, and debris after heavy rains and flooding. They're trying to treat the water supply, and the almost million people in Austin are going to have to wait two weeks for the system to settle. And now Hurricane Willa may put another kink in those plants. And that, that works, boiling the water. That gets enough of the stuff out, or is that a roll with the dice thing? Because it seems kind of like archaic uh, science. <laughs> yeah. oh, we'll boil it. It'll kill the little microbes and they'll float away and stuff. That's what they always say to that do. Is, that's what they always say. It's what I learned to do. I was going to say what I learned to do in Boy Scouts. I was never in the Boy Scouts. <laughs> but that's that's what that, what I learned to do. Yeah. I saw a guy, the guy that was lost at sea, a kid that was lost at sea for 40 days or whatever, he uh, drank seawater that he had strained through two different t-shirts. Oh, wow. And I heard that would kill you. So yeah. apparently these microbes, they're willing to surrender. They're like French. French yeah, microbes. Really. They're willing to surrender at the first <laughs> fight. Well, the good news is there's no bacterial infiltration. This is just silt, mud, and debris. Not like that's good for you, but it's better than saying there's E. coli or lead. Yeah. Uh, it could be worse, but they're saying boil the water. Personally, if I lived in Austin, I'd be spending a lot of money on bottled. You know, we always have enough bottled water, and the reason being is because she gets bottled water for two people. But I won't drink. I hate water. It's just gross. <laughs> and the water I do use to make my little iced tea drinks in the morning like yeah. that, that's tap water. I don't need none of your fancy <laughs> bottled water to make. Crystal Light's nothing but a bowl of chemicals. I don't need <laughs> bottled water for that. I like the way the Seattle water tastes. Yeah, it's fine. When we lived in Philadelphia, they have hard water, and it does not taste good. Mm. I had to get bottled water because I thought it tasted like poison. And, Danny, I like water. Yeah, I know it all tastes like poison. <laughs> Somebody yesterday must have heard this show talking about advent calendars and all the delightful things we would like to put in our imaginary advent calendars. Yeah. Now, this all came about because we were talking about a brand new advent calendar that's being sold at Target and has cheese behind those cute little windows. 
little baby Jesus. Well, now we are finding out Jack Daniels said, oh, we heard you talking. Yeah. We are going to come out with our own advent calendar. Jack Daniels, 25 little mini bottles of different types of whiskey. Tennessee right. whiskey, Tennessee honey, Tennessee fire, Gentleman Jack. Why not? Yeah. yeah. I'm on board. I never even drank uh, whiskey when I was drinking, but if that were my choice in life, you can you can relapse. You won't go to jail. Your wife won't leave you, but you got to drink whiskey. Guess what I would do? I would, <laughs> told, I would go buy an advent calendar right now and see if I can get through all 24 days or 25 days in oh, oh, three, four days time. Right. <laughs> we always open the advent calendar first thing in the morning, so this one might yeah. be trouble. Yeah, man. <laughs> now you're talking. NASA has made an incredible discovery, and the pictures will probably blow your mind, maybe make you think uh, aliens are real. NASA has discovered a mile-long, perfectly rectangular iceberg floating in the Antarctic. They're calling it a tabular berg, but it is sharp angles, perfect. It looks it looks almost like uh, when somebody's got the cornfields and goes and draws designs in there, yeah. right? and they're like, oh, the aliens did that perfectly symmetrical rectangle. And is it gigantic so it couldn't possibly be made by some prankster? Mile long. Wow. Plus, there are not a lot of pranksters <clears throat> in the Antarctic. That's yeah. exactly why they'd go there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe those penguins. Or did Derek tell us there are no penguins in the Antarctic? I can't keep track of where those penguins are. It seems like No penguins in Alaska. No penguins in Alaska. So it's either penguins, aliens, or nature being really flipping cool. No, right, it's one of those things. Yeah, I'm going to go aliens. <laughs> okay. Now, NASA says that uh, this is nature, but, you know, conspiracy theorists will say NASA knows about all the aliens anyway. Yeah. But the pictures are pretty spectacular, worth taking a look at those. You know online. why a bunch of people are going to say aliens and stuff like that? It's because it is a accepted theory that there are no right angles in nature, that nature doesn't make right angles ever under any circumstances. And I think you see it all the time. You're a crazy person. <laughs> yeah. If you go step in that spot where four states... Yeah. Those are perfect right angle things. Apparently, I am wrong. So, <laughs> this thing must have been made by aliens. A vintage World War II fighter plane for the Nazis crashed and landed on one of LA's busiest freeways. And miraculously. That must have scared some people in Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. hey, 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 Stephen, what do you think? Is that a Nazi airplane landing on right near your house? I didn't even think of that. Like, it's freaky enough to see an airplane land where it's right. not supposed to, let alone one that's got Nazi yeah. symbols on yeah. it. Well, this plane slammed down yesterday on the 101 in Agora Hills, just outside L.A., and poof, went up in flames. Poof. Probably sounded a little more dramatic than poof, but um, the pilot managed to avoid cars on the freeway, got it down cleanly until one of the wings clipped the center divider, and that's when the fuel ignited and then poof. It appeared to be a BF-109, a workhorse aircraft in the German Luftwaffe, and they're not sure if it was a replica or the real deal, but what we do know, it was not Harrison Ford. No, it now, wasn't. Is, is uh, he okay? The pilot okay? Pilot's fine, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Gore Hills, I've spent a lot of time. I'll give you guys a reference as to where it is. Remember when my fan, uh, David Cassidy, was on stage and people said he was drunk and he said he was demented and then he fell off the stage oh, backwards? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Gore Hills. Oh, wow. <laughs> Bummer. If you lose your license, oftentimes you find different ways of getting around. If you lose your car driver's license, maybe you'll take a bicycle or a scooter. Well, one man in Australia had photos of him go viral as he was on his scooter towing his boat because he wanted to go boating. Oh, that is so cool. <laughs> what kind I, of scooter? Uh, I don't have the brand. No, no, not the brand. Just a Foot pedal one, a gas one? A gas, a, definitely a gas scooter. How does losing your license prevent you from, now you're a spectacle. Yeah. Now you're on a motorized vehicle on right. a freeway or highway with a boat behind you. I don't think he thought that through very well. Well, he is in trouble. And uh, police pulled him over and said you can't tow a boat on a scooter. Or so, drive a scooter without a license. Without a license. Because I can put up an argument for you. I can pull this boat yeah. with any legalized vehicle <laughs> I want. Maybe it's, you said an Australian man. Is he in Australia? Yes. Maybe it's different there. Maybe you can ri drive a scooter without a license. Maybe. Maybe. You never know. I think we can do mopeds without a license. Mopeds, yeah. If it yeah. has pedals, you can do it without a license. Um, so what's the difference? You're saying if it, your feet go up on a 
platform or no, something? No, because on a what? moped, you don't have to continue pedaling right. once you get going. Then you can ride it like a motorcycle, but yeah. it's an iffy world because the way you start it and things is give it a couple of good pedals. Uh -huh. Or you could ride it like a bike, but pedaling a moped without the engine on is super <laughs> yeah. hard. But when you get pulled over, you go, no, I wasn't. the motor That's wasn't exactly running. That's exactly what you do. Yeah. I used to, <laughs> in traffic, I used to ride my scooter on the sidewalk in Los Angeles full of people. Not like crazy New York full of people. It was relatively safe. Yeah. But I would just have my feet hit the sidewalk and look like I was pushing it. Okay. And the engine was on. And if anybody yelled at me, I just turned it off with my thumb. Yeah. I went, yeah, what? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Kellogg's Honey Smacks are returning to shelves Good. following their recall after salmonella infected 100 people in 33 states. The company said they are going to roll out Honey Smacks again with a simpler, updated recipe. So Honey Smacks, formerly known as Sugar Smacks. They're taking the salmonella out of the recipe yeah. to simplify it. <laughs> they're putting back in all the artificial flavors and colors, but yeah. they're taking out the salmonella that we all grew up with. Exactly. It's time for today's Things Are Not Right in Florida. Story of the day. Yay. A Florida man did something pretty awful on a Southwest Airlines, but had what he thought to be a good defense. Bruce Alexander, Florida, was arrested charged with sexual con contact, abusive sexual contact. He's on a flight, and he touched the woman's boobies in the seat next to him. And she freaked out. So what are you doing? <laughs> did she just say boobies in yeah, the news? Yeah, she did. <laughs> and I'm assuming the rest of the woman's body was there, not yeah. just the boobies in the, the seat next to him. <laughs> well, he said, it's okay the president of the United States says it's okay to grab women by their private parts. Yeah, president said yeah, that. Yeah. He did say that. Yeah. I makes don't know it, that that's a solid defense. <laughs> it makes you in the news, makes you more interesting. Uh, well, he was arrested, no matter what his excuse. Uh, the way I have voted in the last several elections is Democrat, but I don't automatically hate things Republican. Yeah. And there are three or four things that the president does right that you just want to go, hey, that's I like the stock market and the low on all that really good. And then, oh, you can grab women by the price. You just wrecked everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We are going to be right back with music news. We've got a big lawsuit going on. We'll tell you who is suing and why you will likely be on their side. A TV show host is in trouble for some disturbing comments about Halloween. We have got the audio. And in sports, one of your Seahawks did something very cool yesterday. Plus, of course, all the World Series news next. Many moons ago, Tracy Chapman had a huge album. Yeah. Several hits. Uh, she One is... One of which I, I just loved. The, the, the Fast Car Fast song. Fast Car. Oh, yeah. Because all of a sudden, I thought we were talking about Tracy Ullman. And I was going to say, that song, <laughs> they don't know about us. They never heard of love. I love that song. But it wouldn't matter right now. <laughs> she won uh, um, Grammys. You know, that was a, just a huge, huge album. Like I said, a lot of, lot of hits off of uh, her first couple of albums, including one called... Baby, can I hold you? And somebody asked for permission to use this song. They wanted to sample it for one of their songs. From Tracy. Tracy Chapman. Right. So this is the original song. Does anyone Sorry. have it there? Anybody listening in the other room? Tracy Chapman, do we have it? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know this song. So Tracy Chapman. No. Gets a, uh, well, I was going to say a call, but technically it was on social media. Tracy Chapman was asked by Nicki Minaj if she could use the song. Tracy Chapman said, no, you cannot use my song. Oh, well, it turns out Nicki Minaj had already recorded a song with Nas oh. with her own interpretation of the song. And it was played on a radio station in New York. And now Tracy Chapman is suing her. Nicki. Is suing Nicki Minaj. Because so far, am I am I lost here that two people are sampling the song so far? It's a collaboration. It's a duet. Okay, there was no first time, and then she said yes to that person. She asked her, but she'd already recorded the song. So Nicki Minaj records the song with Nas and says, Hey, Tracy, can I use your song? And Tracy says, No. Well, she had already done it, and then it got played on the radio. Right. And then it made waves on the internet. It has not been released but we can play it. It's a pretty, pretty crummy version, but uh, we have some audio of it that you can play right now, please. Sorry.
Oh. Years gone by and still. So yeah, it's okay. not even I sampling. It. It's the same exact song. Yeah. Right. She's word singing the same lyrics, right? Just, yes. Yeah, that's not sampling. Yeah, just terrible. Though. And then the rapping kicks in and the song does take a different tune, uh, quite literally. But now Tracy Chapman suing Nicki Minaj for damages, trying to stop her from actually releasing the song because it never got officially released. Is there any part of you that thinks that Tracy should be grateful and happy? No. What has she done since that album? Yeah, well, certainly not after hearing that. I don't think she should be grateful. <laughs> she, it's not, I mean, it, 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 certainly it's not her. I don't know that it reflects on her anyway. Yeah. She has the right to say don't do it. But I would think any spotlight you could shine on Tracy Chapman since we got a fast car. I drove right out of my career. You'd think, okay, <laughs> Nicki Minaj wants to do some stuff. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, and if it's a hit, maybe it, it makes people go back. Go and back. I mean, I forgot until this very second how great I thought that CD was. Yeah. As a matter of fact, that was not a CD. CD. That was an album. Yeah. <laughs> uh, turns out Tracy Chapman has had quite a prolific career and does a lot of work. She's a very uh, well-educated woman and does uh, teaching and theater and continues to work to this day. I don't think she needs the money. And I'm with Paul that if that's the version, if that's what it sounds like, hell no, don't use my song. That song's <laughs> terrible. If you want to get an auto tuner, I told a little short story this morning about getting my, my hair cut yesterday. Mm -hmm. If somebody was to take my song and go, I'm going to get my hair cut, 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 cut. You'll see it. Come on, I'm going to get it cut. I go, fine, man. Give me $9 <laughs> and you can wrap my haircut story. <laughs> Taylor Swift continues to prove that she is the nicest person in the music business. Taylor Not if Swift. I have my way. <laughs> <laughs> she has donated $15,500 to a GoFundMe account of a fan whose family is struggling with medical bills. Sadie Bartel's mom has been in a coma for three years. Sadie Bartel, you're named after a drugstore. You should be <laughs> fine. The family is worried about losing their home in Utah because they have mounting medical bills. And the, uh, the girl who she donated the money, the GoFundMe account, 19-year-old girl said, my mom has been sick, that she just went to see Taylor Swift, and we love Taylor Swift, and then she went into a coma. Well, Taylor Swift wasn't asked to donate. She saw this. Good. And made the donation and said, love Taylor, Meredith, and Olivia Swift. Meredith and Olivia are Taylor Swift's cats, named after Grey's Anatomy and Law and & Order SVU. Oh, uh, you know what? <laughs> Just when you think you can't like the girl anymore, you do. <laughs> yeah. Megan Kelly, on her show yesterday... Uh, made some controversial comments that she is already apologizing I for. I am nervous about this because unless there's parts of this that they didn't let us hear... I don't think it's earth-shatteringly bad. I think it's a little stupid. What, what'd what she say? She said uh, that she doesn't think there's anything wrong with wearing blackface for Halloween. If you are a white person who puts on blackface for Halloween or a black person who puts on white face for Halloween, back when I was a kid, it was okay. You were just, as long as you were dressed as a character. And her guests did not agree she had on Jenna Bush, Hager, Melissa Rivers, and someone named Jacob Soberoff. And she is now apologizing. And, of course, there are people of color who are saying there was no point in your lifetime that it was okay to wear blackface. It just wasn't. Oh, I don't know if that's true. That's Don Lemon. So this, again, is not my quote. That's... When I was a little kid, I mean, I didn't know if it was right or wrong. They, people just, neighbors just did it. People weren't telling them it was wrong. Yeah, right? no, Does that make it not wrong? I don't know. I don't. Yeah. I don't know what it was. And you know, I was born in 1959. I went on my first Halloweens in the in the 60s. Um, so nobody thought if it's if it's right or wrong, they'd have said wrong if you were wearing a, a Nazi suit. Yeah. But it became obviously wrong. Where any well-meaning parent would know, oh, we can't do that anymore. And then sometimes mistakes are made, like Prince Harry posing in a Nazi uniform. <laughs> right. People just, you know, they lose track of their senses. I think that's kind people. of the, the backlash here is it wasn't okay. It just was accepted. It wasn't right. something people talked about. Um, so saying it was okay when I was a kid. Uh, that's what people are saying is that's not right. It wasn't was it, okay. Was it ever okay? And, I don't think so, no. And so I, I just don't know what we mean by okay or not because that, it was certainly accepted because, you know, in Al Jolson's first talking movie, he's in blackface. Yeah, right. The minstrels and black men are in blackface because yeah. they look a certain way in these films. So I don't know where I'm right or wrong, but I think people should focus on people who mean harm to anybody of any creed or color. Uh. Anybody say they wasn't with the white chicks? Oh, right. It's a yeah, starring the movie, movie yeah. with the two stars are black, dressed as white women. Yeah. It's gender specific, it's race specific, and everybody, people lined up. That movie made money. Yeah.
She's apologizing. She says, I realize now that such behavior is indeed wrong. I am so... That she- chick is doomed. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't even know her show was still on. That, yeah, she's <laughs> not terrible. even doomed by this. <laughs> like, she's got a slow-crawling career cancer that'll kill her in another... Uh, kill her career uh, in another four or five years tops. This Pretty is- well paid while it's happening. Yeah, oh, no, she's making um, you know, $25 million yeah. or something she signed for. But, you know, I was, I was kidding around about this yesterday because you think money would get you make you a lot happier. Money solves money problems. If you're, right. Say your wife is gonna, doesn't love you anymore and it's, you know, it's killing you and you win the lottery and she's like, well, I'm still leaving. You're still not happy. That million sure. dollars didn't change your day at all in that regard. Hollywood producers have been known to shell out big bucks for the rights to adapt Stephen King's books and stories into movies. But a group of teenagers managed to snap up the rights to one of his stories for the sum of one dollar. Ah, that's adorable. He has this um, program on his website called Dollar Babies. You are allowed to buy one of his stories for one dollar and make it into a movie. Wow. Now, he said back in 1977, I did this program. A man named Frank Darabont adapted The Woman in the Room into a short film. He then went on to direct The Shawshank Redemption and The Green Mile. Wow, pretty good. Helped get this guy's career going because how are film students going to learn if they don't make movies? So now there are a group of uh, kids, um, they're college students in Wales, who have bought stationary bike for $1 and are making it into a movie. Wow. How cool is he? That's very cool. And, you know, everything road leads back to Stephen King for all these movies. Hey, Amanda, do you know how much Stephen King is worth his net worth is by any chance? I'm sure it's on there somewhere. You can look it up if you wish to. And I'll bet $250 million. I bet. Yeah, all of the books and then the screenplays that you had to pay him out for. Yeah, he's got to have a couple hundred million. A couple hundred million. That's crazy. Four hundred million. Four hundred million. Four (laughs) hundred million. Thank you, Amanda. Reese Witherspoon and Jennifer Aniston are starring in a TV drama for Apple, and someone else with a big name is about to join them. That would be Steve Carell. He'll be starring with them in this, which would be his return to TV after departing from the office in 2011. Steve Carell will play Mitch Kessler, a morning show anchor struggling to maintain relevance in a changing media landscape. Oh, you should call it the Mary Tyler Moore Show. (laughs) Reese Witherspoon, Jennifer Aniston... And Steve Carell, um, he still has movies that he's working on, but this is his return to television. I gotta say, I like all those people a ton. Yeah. I, I think everybody in it. I was watching uh, Reels Channel yesterday, and it's nothing but gossip and murder shows. And they had the Reese Withers- Witherspoon, Don't You Know Who I Am tape on. Right. How embarrassing, young lady. <laughs> Pretty amazing, though, the names that they're getting yeah. for streaming only yeah. television. Monday, Warner Brothers announced it is moving Wonder Woman 1984. From November 1st of 2019 to June 5th, 2020. Well, that has prompted release date changes for two other high-profile projects that are now going to face off against each other. In wake of Wonder Woman moving, uh, it's scheduled by six months, they are moving Charlie's Angels, the reboot, into the old date of Wonder Woman 1984. So Charlie's Angels, the reboot, now coming out on November 1st of next year. And this is... Uh, the one that's going to be starring Kristen Stewart, um, Patrick Stewart. If your last name is Stewart, you're in this Anybody movie. named Stewart? Yeah. Um, Elizabeth John Banks. Stewart's going to be in it. Al Stewart. So you're yep. the cat, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and Patrick Stewart and Elizabeth Banks are both playing Bosley. Go figure that out. That's very weird. That's very weird. They've also decided that the Terminator movie will be coming out on November 1st as well. So filling the void of Wonder Woman 1984. Jimmy Stewart. Sorry, it was stuck in my head. (laughs) That's a great one. I didn't contribute any. I apologize. Mm. Oh, we forgive you. (laughs) Stuart Copeland, the police. Sorry, I wanted to play along. (laughs) I liked it better when you didn't (laughs) contribute anything. (laughs) What day was that? (laughs) Facebook is rolling out a complete revamp of its Messenger app. The new version strips out the clutter, condenses the previous nine tabs down to three in an attempt to make it easier to chat one-on-one with your Facebook friends. The standalone Messenger app for Facebook has over 1 billion users. Wow. My goodness gracious. That's a lot of people talking on Facebook. Let's take a look at sports. Sports. Sports Sports brought to you by Bradley Johnson Attorneys. If you're facing a DUI, call 1-800-DUI-AWAY. Sunday, the Seahawks play the Lions with a 10 a.m. start time. 
And uh, as I said, we've got some people returning from the injured list, trying yeah. to see who's going to be back in fine form. We've had uh, quite a few injuries, but Detroit, meh. 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 They're just meh. And we're coming off a of bye week. We're rested. We That's should be right. ready to go. Uh, the Lions are 3-3. Three and three. We are 3-3, three and three, but we are going to beat the Lions. Just I'll make- be coming back from my daughter's wedding trying desperately not to hear scores yeah and i i looked i didn't look at any news apps on my phone which is that's kind of all i do on planes is you know look at my news app and things like that but i made it last time that i was coming home on the same day as a seahawks game i didn't know the score so i'm going to see if i get through this one as well do you you know your uber and the uber driver's like what a great win or if you fly alaska they keep announcing it over the plane (laughs) and i do fly i I usually fly alaska i don't know about to new jersey yeah Thursday Night Football uh, is Dolphins at Texans this week. And Bobby Wagner made a surprise appearance at a Seattle institution yesterday. Oberto Meat Products Company, he showed up for their 100th birthday party. That's cool. cool. He was there to greet fans, take selfies, group photos, signed autographs, ate some beef jerky. And people started hearing about it, and the line was out the door. You see their current uh, spokesperson? They always work with Seahawks. It was Richard Sherman for a while. Yeah. I wonder if he's their guy now. I have seen commercials with Bobby Wagner. Okay, cool. People heard that he was there. Everyone put on their Seahawks gear, went and lined up. Oberto started as a family business in Seattle back in 1918. Wow, my goodness gracious. Happy birthday. Like, you start a brand new company and so it is, oh, by the way, we're going to be doing this thing called World War I starting (laughs) today. (laughs) Try and hang on through it. And the World Series got underway yesterday, and the Red Sox were able to beat the Dodgers in Game 1 of the Fall Classic 8-4. to four. Game 2 is tonight at Fenway, 5.09 start time. Now, the pitcher for the Red Sox last night is Chris Sale. And at his last playoff game, he didn't pitch all that well. Turns out he had to go to the hospital the next day with a stomach ailment. And he said, oh, I, I had a problem with my belly button ring which was what most people believe to be a joke. Yeah, well, except not the press. He was telling reporters I had a problem that my belly button ring was rubbing against my clothes and it it got irritated and I had to go to the hospital for it. And is that not true? That is not not true true at all. Oh, my God. So he was joking, but the press ran with it. Yeah. Well, now the team says if they win the World Series, they are all going to get piercings. (laughs) (laughs) Piercings or belly button piercings? Piercings. Uh, they they have uh, changed their minds a little bit on who's getting what because one of the players, Ian Kinsler, he said, I'd like to get my nipple pierced. Yeah. Uh, Jack White from the White Stripes was at the game last night because he and Ian Kinsler are best buds. Well, Ian Kinsler says, I'll get my nipple pierced. And uh, Rick Porcello said, OK, I'll get a I'll get a belly button piercing. Brock Holt says, I'll get any kind of ring if we win the World Series. Anything you want me to pierce, I will pierce. <laughs> oh, no. So we'll see. If they win, will they pierce? Wow. It's a weird thing to desire to do. <laughs> but I mean, is it one of their things with uh, good luck versus, or no, just in general, they decided to do this? No, it's just uh, the joke being played on the media about the belly button ring kind of taking a new form. Yeah. Don't go with your tongue. It'll chip your teeth like crazy <laughs> and send the wrong message about what like you like to do in your off hours. Yeah. Just don't do it. I pierced my belly button one time with a, uh, and I had a dangling, a dangling jewel hanging from my belly button <laughs> and i thought it was cool and then i was told though well, that's not a boy thing to do no. right i undid it amanda what what do you have pierced presently uh presently i've got my lip pierced and my uh, marilyn monroe you what? pierced <laughs> marilyn monroe well she's <laughs> dead i guess you are mean? it's called a monroe I, I have a vertical labray and a marilyn monroe vertical labray goes through the middle of my lip yeah, yeah. middle well, of the lip d- you know get down with the kids marilyn uh, monroe is the like a beauty mark on your upper lip yes. basically yeah Okay, but no belly button and no, well, I don't know if I know you well enough to ask about the other parts. <laughs> no, of don't, don't pierce that, by the way. That shows up in movies every now and again, and I immediately <laughs> click over to something less disgusting. Sports brought to you by Bradley Johnson Attorneys. If you're facing a DUI, call 1-800-DUI-OA. That's 1-800-DUI-OA. Are we giving people money for nothing again? We are, absolutely. 13 times a day, we give people a chance. Just listen for the hourly keyword. Text it to 200-200 for your chance to win, and you'll have another one, another shot at 710 this morning.
You know, I have a very cool electric uh, bicycle from, is it Rad City? Who yeah. did our, did ads, does ads on Rad this? Power Bikes. Rad Power Bikes. I bought one of those. What a great deal. Anyway, I feel that that would make me faster than a speeding wagon. I don't know. I think Find so. out at 720 this morning. We're playing faster than a speeding wagon. And you can pick up a pair of tickets to see Ario Speedwagon at the Emerald Queen Casino. Well, we just found out this week that the Titanic is set to sail again. Yeah, I'm actually a little bit excited about that. Well, it's starting in 2020, and they will eventually recreate the route, the fateful route, yeah. the ill-fated Well, route. hopefully not recreate all of it. <laughs> exactly. Well, the route is perfect. It's the icebergs <laughs> that make it a menace. You know, it seems like a very intriguing idea. Think about it, the way it was set up and the beautiful chandeliers yeah. and how opulent and people would dress up and... To recreate See, that. See, that's what I, I like a lot. They have cruise ships out now that are in a lot of ways more opulent. There's one on the commercial for it last night. I can't believe the thing floats. It's and there's power and this, they're the ones that say you don't just go upstairs on our boat. All our stairs are Swarovski crystals. All the stairs on the boat. It's crazy. (laughs) It seems unnecessary. But nobody dresses for dinner. Nobody. Everybody's in the same Hawaiian uh, shirt and shorts they were. They got a sunburn. They don't feel that well. The it's the the boats are great. The passengers need to straighten up. (laughs) But I wonder if this is if this was the Titanic and the recreation. If it would be more geared towards classy, and acting like the Titanic was back in the the day. That would be kind of fun, except that whole iceberg part. Yeah. Well, you know what they do to keep out the riffraff is they charge you more. Right. And they yeah. charge you anti-riffraff money. <laughs> that We go to Cabo San Lucas all the time. We stay in this really nice resort. It costs some dough, but it's, you know, a couple times a year I get to go on vacation. That's great. But we can see a uh, resort where it's uh, being told on the news even that Jennifer Aniston's there right now. Tom Hanks is there right now. And the Mm. way they make them, because I'm thinking, let's go bug them. I like those people. (laughs) Let's go say buggy stuff to them. And it turns out that every room over there starts at $3,000 a night. And it's to make it so I can't afford to go hang with Tom Hanks. (laughs) Well, I don't have a price point on the Titanic cruise. I'm imagining that, yes, it's going to be very, very expensive, but a lot of people would like to recreate that time of history, to to recreate it, to have this occurrence in history where it would be kind of amazing until the iceberg part. Right. Don't do that part. <laughs> yeah. You know, you think about some of the occurrences in history that would be fun or no fun to recreate. Like, I don't want to recreate the Hindenburg. I don't want to recreate the uh, Civil War. And they do that all the oh, time. All the time. And they, Very to, true. To every bit of me, you know, we talked about, oh, for dressing up in Halloween, um, uh, how could you dress up in that Nazi uniform, Prince Harry? Well, how do you dress up as a Confederate soldier yeah. shooting blanks? At the North. Like, that, you're on the wrong team. And they seem to be the ones most excited in the recreation. Yeah, they love it. You can wait to see Bobby die. He takes one right to the chest. (laughs) If I'm going to recreate something, what Beatles record did we just play? Do you remember? Uh, I don't recall. It's not important. I would, what I would recreate is going to see the Beatles at the Cavern Club. Oh, yeah. You know, they're all around. George is maybe 17, if that. Yeah. Uh, And they're there. They don't know what's going to happen yet. They're just playing. Paul McCartney's dad was a butcher. And he would bring back hunks of meat to the cavern come the day. They played in the day with directions on how to cook meat because he was going to be home late. So 15-year-old <laughs> Paul would cook a meat. I would go to the cavern club right. in 1964. But if, but if you were going to recreate it, would you want to go to the cavern club and see a Beatles cover band? Like, we're not going back in time to sail on the Titanic. They're recreating this. Would you want to go and see this recreated at the cavern club or only have a time machine experience? Oh, I, I I didn't know there were rules, and now I feel kind of stupid. <laughs> well, this really, is to be honest with you, recreating it, right? So okay, people yeah. are, all the time, like you said, they have those reenactments. The Civil War yeah, reenactments. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're recreating something. Why? Why are you recreating the Civil War? It was terrible. Well, I know that I would. I have a, a one of my better friends. He's in uh, the English Beat. Yeah. Uh, so I go to see a recreation of the Beatles all yeah. the time. And there's great ones. Uh, and if they, yeah, they're they're like the best in the business. So if they played in Liverpool, yes, I would yeah. go see them. Well, you guys listening, what is an occurrence in history that would be fun or maybe no fun to recreate? They are recreating the Titanic. It is about to sail again. What do you think? Call 800-252-1025 or text in 90627.
You know, it, it looks like the Titanic is going to sail again. By the way, I think that would be a cool ride. But here it begs this question. What occurrence in history do you think would be fun or no fun to recreate? Here is our phone number, 1-800-252-1025, or you can text 90627. A lot of those old-time ship experiences, I think, would be fun for people to recreate. Not like, the Lusitania. Not the Lusitania. No, but you were saying, Danny, that nowadays when you go on these cruises, it's people wearing Hawaiian shirts. Like, if we're going to recreate it, you need to dress like you did in the 1900s. Just like the the reenactors for the Civil War, they are down to, like, the buttons. Like, you can't wear an actual button. It's got to be the right material right, yeah. and... You know, some of that stuff does seem fun to recreate in other times. Was uh, it just a cost of travel? Because people dressed up to ride the train or to fly. Was it just because travel was so expensive you felt like, I got to dress nice, I'm spending so much money on this? Well, I'll say the airplane was it's it's so novel and new. It's an experience, and it's the jet setter, and it is the elite that can afford to do it. Yeah. Uh, I think dressing t- for dressing's sake was just something that was taken for granted. Like, I don't know that they knew that they were doing it as much as we know we're not doing it. Yeah. You know what I would love to recreate, now that you mention it, is that old-time air travel, that everyone would be dressed up, and you'd go in, and the seats, there'd be, like, actual tables, and the seats would look all different. Like, retrofit those airplanes. Does my plane still go fast? Yes. Because those planes don't go that fast. I was wondering <laughs> that about the ships, too. Sometimes, you know, that ship took four months. Yeah. Can we do that in a the steam, week? The, the, the black smoke that comes out of the pipes is <laughs> not really that good for anybody. That's all true. What occurrence in history do you think would be fun to recreate, or maybe something that would not be so fun to recreate? Call 800-252-1025. Good morning to Vinny and Renton. Hi, you guys. Good morning, all. Good morning, morning, Vinny. It's me. Um, hey, for you and Danny and I and Paul, maybe the 29 Yankees watching them play baseball and all the old-time baseball teams. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, baseball, but why am I excluded? <laughs> why are me and Tori I, excluded I, I, from I don't this? know, because Vinny doesn't love you. Well, Vinny, why can't Sarah go? Sarah could come. Sorry, honey. <laughs> yeah, honey. There's I thought it was because sexy about it. There's nothing sexist about it, sweetie pie. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was because you were rooting for the Red Sox to win the World Series. Oh, so you can't, be you can't go back to an old time Yankees game. But that's a great idea. You know, you think about if you are, say, a New York Mets fan, recreate the 1986 Mets yeah. and have that that game actually get played with the people who are still around, that'd be oh, fun. Do the 1919 Sox game and tell them not to cheat this time around. <laughs> yeah. That'd be good. It was such a great idea. I think they made a movie out of it called Field of Dreams. I right? heard that. Uh, yeah. If you build it. If you build it, they will come. What occurrence in history do you think would be really fun to recreate? Let us know at 800-252-1025. Morning to Nancy and Bellevue. Hey, Nancy. Good morning, gang. Morning. Long time no talk. Nice to hear from you. Um, Hey, it's nice to always hear. I listen to you. I just am driving, and you know how that goes. You can't get to everything. Right. Sure. Um, uh, I was thinking the Us Festival, except I can't. I don't think this generation would be able to pull it off. But it was three days of mayhem. Sarah, there was assless chaps on Woo-hoo! David Lee Ross. <laughs> yeah, there were. He, he also did not wear pants. He, what what he, year was the Us Festival? 1982. 82. The year my wife was born. No, that she goes to uh, Coachella and everybody it behaves themselves. Yeah. So she found herself at the US yeah. Festival, especially at one year old. That'd be weird. <laughs> but you know, uh, they have tried to recreate Woodstock. They did right. two subsequent Woodstocks, idea. and I mean, the first one seemed to go okay, but then the next one did not. But to try to recreate Woodstock. Seems like a great time of history to recreate. It right. was a good idea, but now Coachella has sort of taken over instead. And in better weather. <laughs> yeah, True. Really. That's been the biggest answer on the text line at 90627 is Woodstock. Yeah. Bring back Woodstock. Do a new Woodstock. Also, the Salem Witch Trials. Somebody I want to bring those back. Somebody wants well, to recreate the Salem Witch I Trials. I said specifically, what occurrence in history would you think be fun or no fun. True. So, yeah. Yeah. Sam Woods Trials be a good. I'm going to go with Black Plague. Yeah, and no fun. Don't no, fun. no fun to recreate. No fun. How about Roanoke, where they all eat each other <laughs> <laughs> before they can get back from England with food? I don't want to recreate uh, Roanoke. What's an occurrence in history that you think would be fun or maybe no fun to recreate? Good morning to Dave and Hobart. Hey, Dave. Hey, good morning. Morning. Hey, I was just, uh, you know, the, I was over in Europe here about two weeks ago and uh, got a chance to see the cars from the Orient Express. Ooh. And understand they do about a uh, 24-hour run once a year, in which you can get on there and do a run, and um, it's like 2,500 bucks or something like that. It's pretty spendy, but I always thought that'd be a bucket list. Yeah, you know what? If you look around, you do some serious googling because I'm also curious about the Orient Express. 
There's about nine different trains running claiming claiming to be the Orient Express. Oh, really? There's one through Canada that claims to be the Orient Express. There's now where did the original uh, 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 Orient Express go or start? I think it it started didn't it start at the uh, the Gare de Lyon in Paris. And uh, they went all the way to Istanbul. I thought it started. In, I thought it started in Istanbul. So I'm going to go. Okay, you're yeah. right, and it ended. That would be cool. I would love to do that. Of course, things in Istanbul are kind of blowing up right now. So maybe we'll wait. <laughs> yeah, I think the bringing back the Orient Express to recreate that time would be very cool. A lot of um, nice ideas when it comes to travel. And I would, I'd like to do anything since we've we've brought this up more than once. I'd like to do something where it was. Uh, um, you had to dress for dinner. You had yeah, to dress. Sure. And there are things I will tell you about this on a, on a cruise ship, because I shame on you for always wearing shorts and a Hawaiian shirt. They do have a tuxedo shop on most boats. Okay. Yeah, really? you could actually buy a tuxedo. Yeah, yeah. isn't that Fancy. weird? What about Doug uh, calling from Mount Lake Terrace? Is there an occurrence in history that would be fun for you to recreate? Good morning, everybody. Yes. Morning. Um, I, I, I think the, I think... The um the spruce goose would be really cool to see right here in Seattle. You know, we're making flights up to like Vancouver or Victoria or something. That'd be cool. That'd well, be neat. That would be better than its first and only flight, which lasted fifty three seconds. <laughs> see, I don't know if you want to get it because it's got to be a hassle to get to the spruce goose, and then only fly. But Howard Hughes was flying it at mm-hmm. the time when it went. They we weren't supposed to take off, but they took off for fifty three seconds. And I have to say, I've been on it. Half a dozen times or more. It's it was it's not anymore, but it was in Long Beach, California, about oh, yeah, half an hour right. from my house, yeah. right next to the Queen Mary. Kathy in Tacoma, what's an occurrence in history that would be fun or no fun to recreate? Debtor's prison. Good or bad? Bad, because I'd be in prison. Oh. Well, no, oh, yeah. aside from I'd be happy to bail you out. I think debt. So many people <laughs> owe me money.